Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Mohit Hamaltamakovala, second year PG resident at Krishna Vishwavidya Pit. I will be presenting paper on intracranial ring enhancing lesions. Most common lesions found in brain on your imaging are ring enhancing lesions. These can be caused by variety of infections, neoplastic, inflammatory and vascular diseases. Aims and objectives to analyze and evaluate ring enhancing appearance as a sign in the differential diagnosis of neurological lesions in the brain. To distinguish between neoplastic and non-neoplastic peripherally enhancing or ring-like lesions on MRI. Materials and method. Study design. Retrospective. Observational study. Study location. Department of Radio Diagnosis. Kim Skarar. From January 2023 through December 2023. Study population and sample size. 17 patients were included in retrospective study conducted at Department of Radio Diagnosis. Kim Skarar. Study period. January 2023 to December 2023. Cerebral abscesses. A 11-year female with history of high-grade fever and seizure episode, biogenic abscesses, late encapsulation stage, a well-defined thin wall lobulated and smooth margin lesion noted in the left ganglio-capsular region involving thalamus extending superiorly to the corona radiata and inferiorly to the midbrain, heterogeneously hypo-intense on T1, T2 hyper-intense showing thick uniform capsule and dual rim, getting suppressed on flare, showing peripheral complete ring enhancement with central non-enhancing component. Peripheral diffusion restriction with areas in center also showing diffusion restriction. Mild periregional vasogenic edema is seen in the left ganglio-capsular region. On MR spectroscopy, elevated lipid lactic pain with normal choline and creatinine peaks noted. Tuberculoma. A 60-year-old female with history of fevers and spidies, multifocal nodular and ring-enhancing lesion seen in right cerebellar hemisphere and periregional edema. Facing adjoining sulcus spaces, few of them are conglomerated. The lesion is causing mild mass effect on fourth ventricle on right side, iso to hypo intense on T2 flare and T1. No diffusion restriction, no blooming on GRE, no abnormal leptomeningeal or pachy meningeal enhancement seen. Neurocystic sarcosis. This disease occurs in four stages cystis or vesicular stage, colloidal stage, granular stage, calcified stage. A 12 year female with history of seizure. Here, the neurocystic sarcosis in granular nodular stage was noted. Few well-defined lesions in the left parafel sign, parietal region in close proximity to the subarachnoid space, hyperintense on T2-weighted images and flare, and a peripheral hypo-intense rim and hypo-intense dot, likely scoliosis. Iso-intense to hypo-intense on T1-weighted images, showing areas of diffusion restriction in the periphery. Ring enhancement on post-contrast images. Print metastasis. In a known case of invasive ductal carcinoma of the left breast, multiple ill-defined intraaxial and extraaxial lesions of varying involving bilateral cerebellar hemisphere with surrounding edema causing mass effect on fourth ventricle and brainstem with effacement of CP angle and medullary systems. Similar small lesion in parasitical extraaxial location of right frontal region with no surrounding edema were noted. On T2-weighted images, it was ISO2 hypointense. T2 weighted and flare, ISO2 mildly hyper intense and diffusion weighted and on ADC mildly patchy diffusion restriction was noted. On hemo, no evidence of blooming and T1 post contrast images, homogeneous enhancement was noted. Glioblastoma. A 42 year female with history of headache, a high grade glial neoplasm like glioblastoma, WHO grade 4 was noted. Large ill defined irregular area in right parietal, occipital, and part of temporal lobes involving splenium of corpus callosum and thalassum must not crossing the midline. Appearing ISO2 hypointense on T1 weighted images and heterogeneously hyperintense on T2 weighted images with areas of cystic changes within. Peripheral rim and central patchy areas of diffusion restriction and multifocal peripheral surrounding perilegional edema with midline shift and central areas of, of blooming on GRE sequences. On post contrast T1 weighted images, heterogeneous predominantly peripheral enhancement with central non enhancing areas were noted. MR spectroscopy level increased choline peak and reduced NAA peak with increased choline to NNA ratio of 6.0. Choline to creatine ratio is 4.2. Multiple sclerosis. A 40 year female with history of headache presented with a, and on MRI patchy focal areas along both callosoceptal interface perpendicular to the corpus callosum, that is the loss and fingers. Similar lesion also seen in bilateral white matter of temporal lobe and left half, left half of cerebral pedangle. Hypersync intensities on flare and T2, this lesion show no post-contrast enhancement and diffusion restriction. Patchy areas of altered signal intensity seen in the cervical spine predominantly at the C2, C3, C4, C5, C6 and D1 level. Hyperintensity on T1 and T2 sir hyperintensity noted. Few of these lesions are showing ring-like enhancement. So the results were there were four cases of cerebral abscesses, 
four cases of tuberculomas, two cases of neurocystisarcosis, three cases of metastasis, two cases of glioblastoma, and two cases of multiple sclerosis. Cerebral ring enhancing lesions are defined as an area of hypointensity in MRI of brain tissue surrounded by a ream of enhancing tissue after contrast in injection. Various characteristics like number of lesions, location, margins, wall thickness, complete or incomplete ring enhancement from a peridional edema are taken into consideration to reach a diagnosis. MR spectroscopy also helps in evaluating various ring enhancing lesions. On concluding the paper, MRI along with MR, MR spectroscopy has been the most sensitive modality in the characterization of intracranial ring enhancing lesions. These were the references used in this paper. Thank you.